Yo guys, what's up? So it's time to do some raid guides, right? And instead of putting it all into one long ass video, uh, I'm going to do just short little eight, ten, eight to 10 minute guides on each boss. I think it'd be a little bit easier this way uh, for the warlocks out there. I'll be doing, I'm going to do it like for this example, I'm going to do a lurker raid guide and then I'm immediately going to do the, the lurker warlock guide and then I'll go for each boss. Okay. So this is the, this is a map. This is just to give you an overview of where the positioning are. As you guys see, this is the main platform. This is where you'll actually be tanking the boss right here. If there's a way to put boss here, let's just pretend that this is the boss. This is where he gets tanked the entire time. He does not move. For that reason, you have a tank right here. Doesn't matter what tank you have. We use a warrior, but it doesn't really matter. You have him tanking him right here at all times right here. I have footage of why in the video, why you want him here, but this is where you're going to want him to go here as well. You're going to need two more tanks, which is something which will stand here for phase one, right? But during the phase two, when the ads come out, they'll you'll see, but they separate, right? So you're going to have a couple more tanks right here. You're going to have all your melee DPS right here, blah, blah, blah. All your melee DPS just hanging out, fighting the boss behind the thing, blah, blah, blah. Then you have your healers. So I'd like to put one over here. You want to have them over here to be able to, one, reach the platforms, right? And as these platforms, we'll talk about it in a second, but on these platforms, we can do that right now, actually, for instance, our, this is the Warlock platform, okay? So we're going to pretend that this is where all the Warlocks stand, right? And then you have the Hunter platform over here. This is where all the Hunters stand, okay? Easy enough. And then you have the mage platform over here where all the mages stand, right? The mage, shadow priest, stuff like that. Uh, I like to put the mages here. I like to put the shadow priest for about right, right here because I can still reach for the mana and also it kind of like frees up the platform because this is the smallest platform. So all your hunters here, all your warlocks here, you'll see why when we get this to phase two, okay? So this is pretty much what you want to do with the setup. Just, just have everything here. You guys are going to be pumping. This is the entirety of phase one, right? This is what the, the, the floor is going to look like as you guys are getting ready to pull this boss, right? So phase one happens. You guys fish him up. He comes up. This is everything you're fighting, right? There's two phases in this fight. Phase one is the boss phase. Phase two is the ad phase. So phase two, phase one is just simply this, okay? All right, guys, welcome to Lurker. So this is a pretty easy fight. There's nothing you got to worry about here. There's only really only, there's two phases. First off, this is first phase and then the next phase, right? This is the, uh, is the ad phase. So the first thing you need to worry about is a geyser. I'm going to pause it real quick. What this geyser does is you're going to see it right here in a little bit. It, it spits a geyser of water at a group of enemies, right? I don't know what the range is. I want to say fi between five and eight yards. Someone can correct me in the comments, please. So what it does is if I got geyser right now, what that would do is it would hit myself in the air and push back a little bit and anybody else around me. So what you're going to see right here is I think this guy, this warlock get hit, Winky get hit by it. And then since this guy's too close and this guy's too close, they all get hit right here during lust too. Boom, right there. That's the geyser right there. So for that reason, stand out. I mean, spread out, even on your platforms. Get like, go like five to six, seven, eight yards, whatever it is, find out, do what it is. Find out what it is, I mean, and go to it. I'm gonna show it from a tank perspective because this next one is called Whirl. So this next thing with Whirl, let me pause it, is Whirl is an ability that will not, it doesn't affect, first off, I guess I should say, there's no threat with range. If you're a ranged DPS class, you don't have to worry about threat, you can open throttle right away. Now, melee does need to worry about threat. So he, right here, Lurker, will always sit in here and he will hit whoever's in his range. Now, this is pretty easy to deal with because the tank will, will have the threat. The issue is with this world. Let's see what a world looks like. What the world does is it comes up and it knocks everybody, it knocks anybody in range about it. Whirls around dealing 60 physical damage to all nearby enemies and knocking them back. So in order to avoid this as a tank, you're going to see a world DBM timer right here. And you'll see a world pop up and you'll see what he does. He's going to go and he's going to drop in right on the edge right here. Whirl, boom, he's in the edge. Lurker's whirling and look, nothing happens to him. It knocks him back, but it knocks him back to this edge right here. It just hit, it forced, it pretty much makes his back hit this edge and then it puts him back in the reason. The reason this is a very big deal is because if you are on top of here and you get hit with the whirl, it throws you way back here. And the next thing you know, he's going to turn around and one shot one of your melee. So as a, as a tank, watch what TSW is doing. Also follow him where you watch the world timer, which will come here and everything. All right. So the third and last ability that he has is a water spout. It looks just like this. He will do a blastoise type, you know, water blast right outside of his mouth and go either counterclockwise or clockwise. It's random. It doesn't matter. You can't control it, right? And he will always start the tank and he goes into full 360 degrees. And if you get hit by this beam, you're kind of fucked. It throws you, it throws you so far out in the water that one, you'll die from the scalding waters hot, right? And two, you'll just die because it's way too far away. You won't make it back. You will not get B-res. So this is a spout from a uh, uh, caster perspective. Sorry. He goes around in a circle. So casters, what you guys should all be doing is one, making sure he doesn't swing my way first, but do as much as you can pump, keep pumping. Don't be greedy, run in the water, do whatever you can, instant cast, and know that you can cast in the water if you are a ranged DPS. You can still damage in the water. Jump back on your platform and continue to pump. Also note that for Spout, he goes in like a three, he goes like 400 degrees. So like he'll go like 360, he'll go start, go all the way around and look where he ended. He kind of like goes a little bit out here too. So kind of notice that because he can bug out and say, start like right here and then go this way. And all of a sudden, me and the Warlocks catch like two Spouts on accident. So just be careful to that, be, be weary. Yeah, it's pretty easy, man. 
So right here, you're going to see him get hit with another geyser. Boom. Another geyser. Make sure you spread out. Please, for the love of God, spread out. That's pretty much it for that phase one, bro. The phase one is pretty easy. I know I say that in a lot of my videos, I get trolled for it, but it is very easy. So let's speed this up until we get to a submerged phase. Oh, look, a submerged phase. So let's talk about it for a minute. So a submerged phase, what that means is he goes, Lurker goes in the water, right? And spawns adds. So as soon as you see him go into the water, you get your tanks positioned. I'm not going to put the melee DPS and the healers down because you already know where they're going to be. Um, just have the tanks pick up the ads when they, they come out. Here's what the ads, here's what they look like. They look like weird Nagas because surprise, we're in SSC. It's Naga territory, right? Coil thing, I guess I should say. So each platform will get two ads. These are called ambushers. The outside ads are called ambushers. And what they do is they sit there and they snipe people like professional American snipers. with their goddamn bows and it actually does a lot of damage it's like 35 40 percent of someone's health right now and then you have these three ads which are the ones that need tank they're called coil fang guardians now you just have the tank pick up this one tank pick up this one tank pick up this one keep them positioned enough i mean you can be cheeky look this isn't a guide to this isn't a guide for like the hardcore guilds right this like like i'm not even, we use different strats too but like if you're in a guild that's doing very good you don't need three tanks you can have two tanks you can have one tank here and have the other tank pick up both but I do know a, a majority of people who watch this aren't in super hardcore guilds. So that's why I would suggest three on your first one. And then as for the ads, so there's many ways to handle this. Uh, there's pretty much three ways to handle this, okay? One is to CC both of these, all these ads. You CC all six ads, okay? And then you nuke the three platform ads. And then you keep them CC'd because Lurker will come back up one time and emerge, right? And then eventually he will submerge again. When he submerges again, more ads come out only if you kill these back ads. If these are CC'd the whole time, more ads don't come out. So, like I said, there's three three typical strats. The typical number one typical strat, probably the most ca casual strat, would be to CC all six of these back ads. You just keep them CC'd, and you guys nuke this plot, nuke the main platform down. Boss comes up, you keep them CC'd, so on and so forth. Now he submerges again. You, these guys are still up, so you don't have to worry about them. You nuke these ads down. Now I don't suggest that. What I would suggest doing, and this is kind of how you gauge your guild. So the other option is you CC one of these ads, nuke the other ads, right, and then nuke these ads. And then the ultimate option is you kill fucking every ad here, which is what I suggest. Now, the reason I say that, and here's how you can kind of get a judgment. Sorry, I had this whole thing popping up. It's so annoying. I don't know how to get rid of it, bro. Like, it doesn't make any sense. But um, what you can do to find out if your guild is ready for that is just simply see, double CC all, CC all these back ads, right? Okay. And then nuke these ads. And after these ads are, are, are done, look at your DBM timer. Okay, we have 30 seconds until he emerges back up. Okay, so we're going to kill one of these ads. So, okay, now we know we can kill these ads, keep one of each platform CC'd, and nuke the other one. So now do that. And then go, oh, wait, we still have 15 seconds. Okay, you know what, guys? Everybody nuke their platforms. So the plat the ads come out. Warlocks nuke their platform. Keep Each platform will keep one CC'd and then nuke the other one until the other one's dead and then nuke the other ad. And then you guys go help here. So which of those three strats you do is completely based on your guild, okay? Anyway, that's the ad phase. Let's actually see the ad phase. So here's the submerge. He's going out. My ads are coming out, right? Each platform, just CC right away. You know, Warlock's just a cheeky thing. You can death goal first. I won't get a snipe off. You see a spear one and you see us nuke this other one. Each platformer is doing that. They have one sheeped over here. They're going to nuke the other one. They have one trap. They're going to nuke the other one, each one. And then the next time we do a submerge in this video, I'm going, it'll, I'll show you from a hunter perspective. So you can see it from the hunter side too. Okay. So yeah, just nuke these guys down. This is all you really got to do is nuke the ads. Like you see us doing. Make sure that your, let me see what else can I, oh yeah. Make sure your tanks have them. He has it perfectly because TSW is a baller. Make sure your tanks are in range. So your range DPS can help right here in the platform. See this? You want to be able to reach and help stuff. Make sure you guys are helping at all times. And that's the, that's phase two. That's the end of the phase. And then it just goes back to phase one, guys. And that's it. Two hours later. Oh, look, he decided to emerge. So now that he emerged, what you need to know right away is every time he emerges, he will immediately spout. As you can see, this one's going counterclockwise instead of clockwise. Like I said, so watch out. Jump in the water. Don't get hit by it. Every time he will always, always, always spout. All right, guys, let's go ahead and see some melee point of view here, guys. From the, the legendary Sarth, Rogue, top three DPS as a Rogue. It's kind of bonkers. So I don't know much about melee here, guys. So uh, I'm not going to act like I do. But you can see how he's a good melee. He's a very good melee and a good guild. So you can kind of see how he's, he's handling it. Uh, it looks like he just gets the whirl, eats it, and comes right back in. 
I'm not sure. You know how the tank jumps in a little bit? I wonder if melee can jump in here. I've never tried it. Um, melee might be able to jump in here and just have the world knock back like a tank does instead of having to take it like this. But I guess it's probably not that big of a deal. But yeah, this, this is melee perspective. You guys are just sitting there doing zug zug stuff. An easy way to see how the melee dodges the spout. All right. All right. That's it. You know what? You know what? That's enough of the melee. Come on. There we go. There's the pumpers. All right, guys. We have a submerge coming up here soon after this whirl or after this spout. And I want to show you from my hunter perspective. So let's speed it up a little bit so we can get to that little spot. Okay. All right, guys, let's see what it looks like to be a hunter during the submerged phase. You got pump. You guys are pumping. You don't got to worry about whirl, obviously. And then the ads come out. Um, you know what I will say, actually, real quick. So the thing about hunters, for, let me get a better POV for this. The thing about hunters is I've noticed in the PTR and a lot of complaining over discords and everything is that hunter pets are getting screwed right here. So I don't know what it is. I think it's this little water canal. I'm not sure. And I'm going to tell you guys right now that I don't play a hunter, so I don't even know which direction you're supposed to go. But some people were saying, have your hunter stand on this side of platform and he's safe or have him stand on this side of platform. What I would suggest really though, if, if they don't fix it on live, um, swap the hunter platform with the mage or the hunter and the warlock platform, either or, right? Because we don't use pets. I mean, we have a pet spec, but we're not going to play it right here, right? So like you can just have the hunter swap with the warlocks or hunter swap with the mage and then you don't got to worry about anything. Anyway, so you see the double trap, they get a trap out and they start pumping. That's all the hunters do. It's pretty easy to do this too, man. I just want to give you guys a little perspective from the hunters too, all right? And that's the whole fight. That's the whole fight. I'm going to finish up this hunter part and then I'll speed it up when we get back to the warlock perspective. And then that's it, guys. Pretty easy. Once again, you'll come up and you'll see a spout. And that's it, guys. See you tomorrow on the next one, man.